What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we're sick of it. I woke up to fog conditions, which was fantastic. Set off to one of my favorite woods. I don't think I've featured this woods on the channel, so I was very excited to have the opportunity to do that. I'll tell you a little bit more about the location in just a second. Gear today is the Canon EOS R7, which is a crop sensor mirrorless camera. I've got it fitted up with the original EF version of the Tamron 24 to 70. And uh, I'll be more about that lens later as well. Carrying some work gloves, which I had left in my car. It's always convenient to have extra work gloves around for days like today when I forgot my gloves. And having worked in a multitude of factories, I know exactly which work gloves I like and I buy them in bulk. And uh, well, they're great. They're great not just to keep your hands warm, but they're they're built to be very articulate. And uh, I'll link the I'll link the ones that I like down in the video description in case you want to just pick up a bunch for your car or whatever. So this woods is uh, is an abandoned, um, a formerly a county or city park that w has been abandoned, and uh, the custody is turned over to a local university. Um, uh, you can see that it's a bit difficult to navigate. The trails are not upkept, but they're all uh, all of the old fixtures and signage and things like that I think uh, make it a fascinating place to explore in generally but especially under foggy conditions like we had today I broke out the camera to take this uh, photo first and re remember that I still had the polarizer on so uh, what you're seeing is I've looped the polarization effect so you can see what the shot looks like with and without the polarizer and then I also wanted to actually take the photograph with and without the polarizer mounted on the lens as well to test the conventional wisdom that a polarizer is beneficial to have mounted up in foggy or misty conditions. And so you can see on the top the polarized and on the bottom the, the photo without the polarizer. I ended up not feeling like this was enough of a difference to justify the loss of light in this low light condition uh, remove the polarizer and the rest of the photos from this morning session will be without the polarizer if you're curious which polarizer I use though and I highly recommend a very affordable high quality glass Japanese polarizer that you can get for probably around a hundred dollars I'll link that down in the video description as well I continued on hiking into the woods I found this acorn and thought well where am I going to put this? <laughs> uh, just the top of an acorn and I left it on top of an oak leaf to catch a macro shot. I probably fiddled around with that for way too long considering that these were depleting and very special atmospheric conditions. Uh, set back into the woods you can see where I was gesturing towards the top of the uh, next hill over and I set over that way to begin uh, capturing a few things that stood out to me. But I just wanted to get a little closer and so you saw that first vertical. And then a horizontal. This is the only photo that I actually processed out of the entire lot. Um, and all the remainder of the photos are basically straight out of camera. And I would also say they're basically from here on out just compositional exercises. Uh, taking this first photo at 24 millimeters and then 50 millimeters. And now you can see what the photo looks like at 70 millimeters um, after adjusting uh, somewhat for the distance. So these long focal lengths are really great, not only for isolating subjects, giving extra working distance, but also in foggy atmospheric conditions for putting extra fog between the lens and the subject, uh, sort of amplifying or what you think of as telephoto compression, sort of compressing the fog against the subject. So uh, I find that to be a very helpful technique. Working with the 24 to 70 today because the last two videos were sh uh, using the 70 to 200. I think though the 70 to 200 would have been a great lens to have out on this expedition. I brought the 24 to 70 just to give a little variety. Um, for a significant number of the preceding shots, I found myself troubleshooting a sharpness issue. Uh, where I, uh, at first I thought, well, maybe this is diffraction. I'm sort of adjusting to working with the crop sensor. So I uh, made sure to shoot at F8 or more open. Again, this is an F2.8 lens. So I expect it to be sharp between F4 and F8. 
um, and also being sure to work above the reciprocal rule. I turned off the image stabilizer because uh, this is a used camera and I was afraid that it might be causing some issues. But the conclusion I ended up drawing, especially after reviewing the images, is just this, this lens sucks. <laughs> and I don't recommend it. Um, and maybe in a future video, I'll, I'll talk about how I ended up with this old lens that uh, has sort of been a, a thorn in my side ever since acquiring it. Um, but you can see that I stopped along the way to take some macro shots, some opportunities where I stopped to sort of challenge myself to work with the messiness of the woods, which is something I would like to get better at instead of instead of limiting myself to only the most t you know tidy uh, composition compositional opportunities. So I bombed my way back across the woods as the fog was dissipating back towards my car, and in so doing, I encountered lots of spots that I thought would be nice to bring my girlfriend for a picnic. So, uh, PSA as we come into the spring, don't forget to take your partner for a picnic. Found one last macro opportunity. With, uh, I, I had just put the camera up, actually, and was not intending to take any more photos, and I saw this uh, hollowed out spot on a fallen log that was filled with rainwater. And I thought, I just need, just needs a leaf. So I improved it with a leaf, uh, captured this last macro shot and headed out of the woods for the day. I was actually privileged to a tour of this woods earlier last year with one of the administrators who helped to facilitate the, its opening as a public park. Um, and that gentleman is in his seventies now. And so it was great to have him sort of guide me through and help me build the vision of what maybe it once was in its, in its highest glory. And there is a story about that on my Instagram feed. So, um, do, I do encourage you to get a little backstory on the location. Follow me on Instagram at mattramsey.gallery and, uh, links again to all the, all the gear in the video description. But until I see you next time, you guys keep an eye out and a foot forward and thanks for watching. Bye.